at the end of 1.3, we had talked about this idea of economic growth. Now, with economic growth, we said that this was a change in, you know, the, the quality of our resources or technology or productivity that allowed a country to produce more than they could before. But if you remember with our production possibilities curve, one of the assumptions we had played under was that this country was closed off from trade. Well, what would happen if we lifted that restriction and the country was no longer closed off from trade and they could trade with other countries? Well, I like to call this the exception to the rule when it comes to economic growth, because what we would see is that without achieving necessarily more resources or more technology or anything like that, a country is able to produce, or we should say in this case, gain access to more of each of the goods and services than they could before when they open up to trade. So let's take a look at an example of this. So again, we're dealing with Bradley Land who can produce cars and boats, and we have that same production schedule uh, when it comes to cars and boats for Bradley Land. But let's say we also have the country of Millertopia. Now, using those same uh, resources, maybe Millertopia's ability to produce cars and boats is slightly different, and you can see that here on this table. Now, let's remind ourselves what this is saying. We say here with Bradley Land, this table shows us that if it put all of its resources toward producing only cars, it could produce 60 cars, or those same resources instead could be used to produce boats and allow us to produce 36 boats. Another thing that this is also telling us, and we had mentioned this back in 1.3, is that the opportunity cost of 60 cars is 36 boats and vice versa. Because if you were at, um, say, point G, and you wanted to move your production from zero cars all the way up to 60 cars, well, in order to produce all 60 of those cars, you'd have to give up all 36 boats. Same is true vice versa. Now, when it comes to Millertopia, what this chart tells us is that Millertopia, if they put all their resources toward just cars, could produce 48 cars, or toward just boats, 48 boats, or anything else in between. And once again, the opportunity cost here for Millertopia of 48 cars is 48 boats, and the same is true vice versa. Now, because both of these are dealing with constant opportunity costs, what it actually allows us to do is to combine this information into a simple table. And in that simple table, what we're going to do is we're going to have Bradley Land and Millertopia across the top and cars and boats down the left side. And what we really want to do is just identify for each one of these countries, if they were to put all of their resources toward one or the other, how much could they produce? So once again, for Bradley Land, if Bradley Land put all of their resources toward cars, could produce 60 cars. But again, that means they wouldn't be producing any boats. If they put all those same resources toward boats, they could produce 36 boats. But again, no cars. What this shows us for Bradley Land is if we were to plot out Bradley Land's production possibilities curves, uh, this is just the X and Y intercepts, uh, essentially is what it is. Now we could do the same for Millertopia. Millertopia could produce 48 cars or 48 boats. So in this little table, it gives us enough information to be able to understand what each production possibilities curve looks like for each one of these countries. So looking at this table, who can we say is better, let's say, at making either good, either cars or boats? Now, in asking that question, we're actually asking about something known as absolute advantage. Absolute advantage is just who can make more of a good or service within those same resource constraints. So looking at this table, who has the absolute advantage then in the production of cars? And really what we're just asking is who can produce more cars? Well, in this case, it'd be Bradley Land. And how do we know that? Well... 60 cars is greater than 48 cars that Millertopia can be producing. So therefore, Bradley Land has the absolute advantage in the production of cars. Well, who has the absolute advantage in the production of boats? Well, again, looking at boats, Bradley Land can produce 36 boats, Millertopia 48. So in that case, it's actually Millertopia because 48 boats is greater than 36 cars. Now, again, looking at these two countries um, and thinking about that absolute advantage, we, we really shouldn't focus there because just who can produce more isn't necessarily the most helpful information to have. We instead want to look at who can produce more and in doing so, give up less production of the other good in the process. This is actually something known as comparative advantage or who can make a good or service at a lower opportunity cost. So here, we're not just looking at who can produce more, but who can produce more of something in, or produce one of something, we should say, in producing less and giving up less of the other. All right. Who has the comparative advantage then in the production of cars? Well, in order to do this, we have to do just a little bit of math. So 
What we know for Bradley Land is Bradley Land can produce either 60 cars or 36 boats. Now we can set these two equivalent because the exact same resources to produce 60 cars, we can use those exact same resources to produce 36 boats. Now in this case, we don't want to know the opportunity cost for 60 cars because we want it to be down in a way where we're able to compare the two countries. So we want to get this down to just say, what's our opportunity cost for a single car? Well, what we can do here is just divide both sides by 60 because there on the left side, it'll give us just one car. 60 over 60 is one. On the right side, it'll give us 36 over 60 boats. And if we simplify that down, what we would end up getting, again, one car equal to 36 over 60 boats is equal to one car for every 0 0.6 boats. Here's what that means. Bradley Land, anytime they want to produce one more car, their cost, their opportunity cost is 0.6 boats. They want to produce one more car, they have to stop producing 0.6 boats. When it comes to Millertopia, again, we said the same resources to produce 48 cars can be used to produce 48 boats, so we can set those two equivalent. If we want to get that just to say one car, again, so we can compare the two, what we would do is divide both sides by 48. In dividing both sides by 48, each side actually does simplify down into one, because one car equals 48 over 48 boats, and we see that the opportunity cost for Millertopia for producing one car is one boat. Now for comparative advantage, what we want to know is who can produce one car and give up fewer boats in the process. And if you notice, Bradley Land here has the comparative advantage. Why? Because in order to produce one car, Bradley Land has to give up fewer boats in order to do so than Millertopia. And therefore, Bradley Land has the comparative advantage. Now, who has the comparative advantage in the production of boats? Well, we would actually go through the exact same process that we just did and just kind of flip some things. So for Bradley Land, 36 boats is equivalent to 60 cars, like we had mentioned. But here we want to know just for one more boat. So what we would do is here divide both sides by 36 because it'll give us one boat there on the left. On the right, it'll give us 60 over 36 cars, which simplifies down into one boat is equal to 1.67 cars or one and two thirds cars. What this means is that every single time Bradley Land wants to produce one more boat, they have to stop producing 1.67 cars. That's their opportunity cost. They're giving up the opportunity to produce one and two thirds cars. Now for Millertopia, like we said, 48 boats is equivalent to 48 cars. What we would do here is divide both sides by 48 to get that just to say one boat. Uh, and we'd say one boat is equivalent to 48 over 48 cars. That simplifies down once again into one boat equals one car. Now who has the comparative advantage here? Well, if you notice, Millertopia, in order to produce one boat, only has to stop making one car. Bradley Land would have to stop making more cars than that. They'd have to stop making 1.67 cars. And therefore, Millertopia actually has the comparative advantage here because Millertopia is able to produce one boat at a lower opportunity cost. So what if Miller, Millertopia and Bradley Land opened up their borders and traded? What would be their terms of trade and how much would they trade? Well, first of all, why would they trade? Well, like we had said, we had said that trade actually allows for countries to achieve or have access to more of goods and services than they could on their own. But we've got to prove that. So in order to do so, first, we need to take a look at a couple rules for trade. First of all, trade is only going to happen if it's mutually beneficial, right? Like both Bradley Land and Millertopia both need to benefit from this trade in order for them to agree to trade in the first place. We're also going to look at countries specializing in producing the good for which they have the comparative advantage. The comparative advantage helps tell us which country can produce a good and have a lower opportunity cost. And whoever has the lower opportunity cost, they're the ones that we want producing it because their cost is lower. And finally, the terms of trade will exist between the country's opportunity cost ratios. So we'll look at that one here more in a second. So when it comes to the terms of trade, we said um, each country, point number two, is going to specialize in producing the good for which they have the comparative advantage, which means Bradley Land is going to specialize in cars because they had the, the, the comparative advantage in the production of cars, and they're going to spend all their resources producing 60 cars. Millertopia is going to specialize in boats since Millertopia had the comparative advantage there and produced 48 boats. And from there, 
Bradley Land will export cars to Millertopia, and Millertopia will export boats to Bradley Land. Now, the terms of trade, or the trade in general, is only going to be mutually beneficial uh, if both sides are coming out better as a result, and that will occur between the opportunity cost ratios. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at one of those opportunity cost ratios for both countries. If you remember, we said for Bradley Land, one car was equal to 0.6 boats. Millertopia, their opportunity cost was one car for one boat. So what that means is, again, since Bradley Land is specializing in cars, Millertopia is specializing in boats, and they're going to trade, we want to know at what rate would they trade, and we need a rate in which it's beneficial to both. Well, we said it's going to fall between those ratios, and what that means is they would agree to trade at some rate for one car for every 0.6 to one boat. Now, how do we know they would agree to trade in that range? Well, think about it this way. On their own, Bradley Land could stop making one car in order to produce 0.6 boats instead. So in order for this trade to be worth it to Bradley Land, they need to get more than 0.6 boats for every one car it trades away. Like they're only going to be happy if in giving away one car, they get more than 0.6 boats. If they got less than that, they're like, forget that. We could do that on our own by just shifting our production from cars to boats. Now, in the same way for Millertopia, Millertopia knows on their own they could stop making one of those boats and shift those resources to get one car instead. So in order for this trade to be beneficial for Millertopia, they need to be able to trade away less than one boat for every one car it receives. Right? They want to give up less than one boat for a car. That's the only way it's going to be beneficial there. So maybe they agree to trade somewhere in the middle, let's say one car for, for 0.8 boats. If you notice for Bradley Land, they're gaining more than that 0.6 boats for every car it trades away. Millertopia is trading away less than one boat for every car it receives. That's what makes it mutually beneficial. Both sides are coming out better as a result of this trade. Now, they're not going to trade exactly like one car for 0.8 boats. They're probably going to try trade more than that, but at that same rate. So let's go ahead and use this example, multiplying that out by 30. So let's say that they agree to trade at that same rate, multiplying it out by 30. They trade 30 cars for 24 boats. Now, first, we're going to draw each country's production possibilities curve. So we have Bradley Land there to the left. We have Millertopia there to the right. And um, Bradley Land, if you notice, they are going to be specializing in cars. And so we can see we've highlighted that yellow point where Bradley Land is currently producing, producing all 60 cars, currently no boats. Now from that point though, what they wanna do uh, is they're going to trade and they're gonna be trading away 30 cars. And so they will export 30 cars. So their, their own car um, access goes from 60 down to 30. So they'll export those 60 cars. Now if you notice, Millertopia is producing at their yellow point there at 48 boats and no cars. Um, and they, from there, they're now receiving those 30 cars, those 30 exported cars, those are imports for Millertopia. Now from there again, it's not just Bradley Land sending 30 cars. Uh, Millertopia is sending 24 boats back in exchange. And so we see Millertopia's boat count goes from 48 down to 24 as they export 24 boats. Bradley Land, on the other hand, is receiving those 24 boats uh, as imports. They've imported those 24 boats. Here's what I want to see what has happened as a result of this trade. If you notice with this trade, what has happened is that both countries have, have now moved to these new points. And if you notice with each of these new points, they are points that are outside of their production possibilities curve. Points that we had previously said were impossible without ec economic growth. And this is why I call this the exception to the rule, because neither of these countries ex experienced economic growth. They both just specialized and then mutually beneficially traded. And so if you see here for Bradley Land, after that trade, their combination of now 24 boats and 30 cars is a point they could not have achieved on their own. And so they are outside of their production possibilities curve here. Same thing's true for Millertopia. This combination for them of, of 24 boats and 30 cars is at a point outside of their production possibilities curve, a point that they could have not achieved on their own. So just to recap, Bradley Land produced 60 cars, exported 30 of those cars in exchange for 24 boats that they imported for, from Millertopia. 
Millertopia, on the other hand, produced 48 boats, exported 20 of 24 of those boats to Bradley Land in exchange for 30 cars, and they both moved to new points on their production possibilities curve. And we can understand and know that this is mutually beneficial because by specializing and then trading between those opportunity cost ratios, they have both now achieved points that they could not have achieved on their own. One last kind of warning I want to give you, um, just be careful whenever you see these little tables because oftentimes, like we just saw, it'll show it to us as the amount of a a good or service that can be produced, right? You know, however many cars or however many boats. But sometimes a comparative advantage question will be set up giving you the number of work hours needed in order to produce one unit of it rather than the raw number of the product that can be created. So you would see something like this where it tells us the number of hours for each. Now in looking at this, um, it's really easy to fall into uh, the temptation of looking at those raw number, uh, those raw numbers and saying, oh yeah, you know, 15 is more than 12, 20 is more than 15, whatever, but we can't do that here. So when we look at absolute advantage here, remember absolute advantage is who can produce more and we can't fall into that trap that I just mentioned. What we're really asking now is who can produce one unit, either a car or a boat in fewer hours, who can produce it faster. So once again, we see for cars, Bradley Land can because it takes less time. Bradley Land can produce a car in 12 hours. It takes 15 hours for Millertopia to produce one of those cars. So Bradley Land can produce one car faster. When it comes to boats, it's Millertopia because those 15 hours it takes Millertopia to make a boat, um, that's faster than it takes Bradley Land. It takes Bradley Land 20 hours. So the absolute advantage there is kind of the same. Now for comparative advantage though, what we're looking at here is who can produce a good or service at a lower opportunity cost. But how exactly do we go about finding that opportunity cost? So again, here's what we're gonna do. To find the opportunity cost of producing one car, what we will do is we will divide the time to produce one good by the time to produce the other, all right? Let's look at an example. So for Bradley Land, it takes them 12 hours to produce a car and 20 hours to produce a boat. If they chose to produce a car, what they're doing is they're saying, hey, I'm going to use 12 hours now to produce a car, and that's 12 hours fewer I can be using to produce a boat. In those 12 hours, though, you could not have produced a full boat, right? Because a full boat takes 20 hours. You're only, you're only taking away 12 of those 20 hours. However, you could have been producing 12 20ths of a boat or 0.6 of a boat. And therefore, the opportunity cost to produce one car is 0.6 boats. Again, because by shifting those 12 hours toward a car, you're taking away 12 of those 24 hours to produce a boat. So putting this into our table, we can do that one up that we just did up in the upper left corner there, where the 12 divided by 20, the 12 hours to produce a car, divided by the 20 hours to produce a boat gives us 0.6. Now for boats, we would do the same. If you're shifting 20 hours toward producing a boat, for Bradley land, right? That's, that's more than a car, right? That's the 12 hours plus another eight hours. And in that time you could have produced one and two thirds cars. So your opportunity cost for producing one boat is 1.67 cars for Millertopia. This one's a little you know cleaner because the hours just change um, super simply from one to the other. You would do 15 divided by 15 and give you one. And same thing there. And so I set these numbers up to be the same as we saw before, but this is just a warning. Be careful because there are sometimes questions that are set up like this and you'll see them set up like this and you'll fall into the trap of thinking that it's the number of cars or boats, but be careful if it says hours. Remember that's the number of hours it takes in order to produce one unit of one of those goods.